Okay, cool. So uh, today will be the first class uh, of uh, Vray, and uh, today we will be getting started with uh, Vray. We'll understand what the interface is all about, and we'll also look into something the normal settings that you need to do uh, before starting of the render. And then we will look into what are the what the material libraries that V-Ray provides on its own. And then we will just start off with V-Ray lighting, and uh, we'll uh, just see rectangle uh, rectangular lights. And uh, today we will try to get something like this, what we you see in the screen. Okay, so we will try getting something uh, something like this out of by just today's class. Cool. I guess everyone downloaded uh, this uh, model that is there from the 3D warehouse. I'll just put this in the description as well. Okay, so you guys can uh, just uh, download it. Uh, then this is the model. Okay, so if in uh, from the 3D uh, 3D warehouse, I have just downloaded this one. You can basically make the model as well according to your wish because of the easiness for doing this rendering. Only I just took it. Okay. So uh, uh, if you guys want to model, if you guys are modeling it, that's also fine. Okay, make sure that whatever you model should be a little realism like this. Okay, when it is in a realistic mode, the more the better the render you will get. Okay, the more realistic your renders will start looking. So that is one thing that you guys need to uh, take care while doing the uh, renders. Make sure the model itself looks a little realistic. Okay, then uh, let us come to the V-Ray now. Okay, for Vray, I told you guys how to install it yesterday and for the trial version. And then if you could uh, go to views, sorry, uh, go to uh, views, yeah, views, you will see toolbars. Select toolbars, then from here, there are like options known as Vray utility, Vray objects, Vray lights, and Vray sketchup. Okay, and just close it. So you will get uh, the four tables that is required for V-Ray. So out of this, this V-Ray utility is an advanced setting which I am not going to teach. Okay, because it's of a, a little advanced that uh, most of the times it is not used at all. Okay, that's why. Uh, I'll just close it. Now I'll go to this one that is the V-Ray for SketchUp. So in V-Ray for SketchUp, the first one is known as an asset editor. Okay, asset editor is basically the prime component we can tell because most of the stuff starts with this one asset editor okay and then you have two things that is known as a render or known as also known as a progressive render and the second one is a pot with a hand okay that is known as a render interactive or the interactive renders uh, you guys uh, need to understand the difference between these two because if you are a person who did not know uh, about V-Ray and if you have started, if you click both, the results are going to be same. But the way it is being produced is different because the first, first one that you see, the render or also known as a progressive render, if you click, what happens is it is used for the final render. After doing all the settings in V-Ray, or after doing all the adjustments, all the lightings, all the material setups in V-Ray and everything is done and you are sure that nothing is gonna be changed and you want the final render output. It then you basically go for this render that is the pro progressive render because this progressive render will use a lot of graphics cards that you have okay it will it will take most of the power that is being used by the lab that's why second is the interactive render which is used by us so as to render in between because for test renders you can tell it is used for testing the renders and that's what is this pot with a hand signalizes okay that is what is the difference please make sure you guys understand this difference because or else later you are gonna damage your uh, lab or the computer that is gonna use because both will give the same results but if you don't know the difference only you can you can understand what it does the second one is here that is a viewport render what a viewport render does is that the screen that you see right now will just get rendered i'll just click on it so you will understand what happens when i click on it you see it basically rendered it rendered a view that was there already in this this is also a test render only okay 
this is also used for test standard but i don't prefer it okay because this will not help me understand what is i am doing in sketchup and what is happening in vray so i normally don't tell anyone to do it i just tell them to clo close it i normally use this say frame buffer okay the frame bu buffer what it does is that it will create a next window okay in the site that will help you to see the same that is happening here if i click you can see okay the same thing comes into a new windows out here so this basically allows you to see what you are doing and do the stuff okay so that is what this frame buffer does okay that the render output will be shown in a different file okay now i'll suggest everyone to just click on the asset editor that is the first one out here if you click on the asset editor something like this will come you will see something like this sometimes you will see this face or on the settings if you click on the uh, settings bar you will see a column or a, a table like this got it so uh, that is that is basically the starting point of any vray so the first thing that you guys need to do is that there is an option known as engine engine side mostly if you are using a lower version of vray you will see cpu and a gpu okay now if it is a higher version of vray you will see cpu cuda and rtx so what is the difference is that if your if your computer or your lap is having more than two render sorry more, more than two graphics card okay vray helps in using both the graphics cards so as to create the render fine so that is what this engine is all about if you click cpu this means that in my lap i have a intel core 7 as well as a g, uh, g uh, nvidia geforce gtx okay so if i use cpu means that it will only use my intel i core okay and if i use gpu that is cuda if i click on it it will basically help you there will be a three dots that is coming up if i select it you can see that my nvidia graphics gtx is ticked i can tick on the cpu of intel as well so that both gets checked that means the render engine that is vray is gonna render with the help of both fine so that is what i suggest everyone to do if you have more than two graphics card click on both so that the render will be out render outcome will be faster fine and then there is rtx rtx means that it will only use the uh, graphics card that is G, uh, geforce geforce gtx which i have okay so that is what is the difference so i now prefer everyone to use a cuda if you have if it is a lower version it will have only have gpu fine so you select that so cuda i am checking both fine so the next thing is uh, the same that what i have told about inter interactive render and the the progressive render so i will now if you make sure that you have on this interactive first if you see that if i on this interactive the part with the hand sign comes up that means i am only gonna do as test renders fine that is uh, this will help you to give a test renders only now i am not going to do a final render right now that's the meaning of that so make sure that is being done then come down to something known as render output render output make sure you on this safe frame because uh, or else you will not understand whatever is going to be rendered okay if you on this you will see that there will be a uh, a, a check or you can see something everything some parts becomes oh, black okay that means anything inside this rectangle will only get rendered okay and then there is something known as aspect ratio out here this is used so as to create what typology of the render that you want in lumion one drawback that it has is that most of the images that has been created is a 16 is to 9 ratio okay so that is a little a drawback in lumion 8.5 which i use it has only a one option that is to make it as an it in landscape mode it doesn't provide the square or it doesn't help you to customize it okay so here you have the advantage of keeping it in a square mode or you want it in a landscape or you want it to into a portrait mode or you want to uh, or or you can even customize the viewport that is been or the render area that you want to use 
okay so this basically helps you in different types of camera angles like if you want to use something like this it becomes like it is easy for you to fit in okay like uh, uh, you are using a a4 then it is easy in a portrait manner okay a4 portrait mode if you can basically use a render like this and if you are using a um, a, 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 a youtube uh, youtube setup then you can basically go for 16 is to 9 got it so that is what are your portfolio you can basically go for 16 is to 9 if you are having a landscape mode portfolio okay so that is the render output that could be used then you can have something known as an image width to bar height ratio if you are doing a test render make sure this is less than 1000 okay or else you will simply waste your time if this means this is something like a pixel okay the more you increase the the more better or the more uh, um, more uh, better the render is that is the more clarity the render will have okay so now, now i'm just keeping it 600 uh, if you want you can keep it like 700 below like make keep it below 1000 if you are going for the test render when you are going for the final render that is a progressive render you can keep it like 2k or 2000 or you can keep it as 4k resolution okay how much you want now i'm just keeping keeping it as 600 and then keeping it. this is the major settings that you need to do before starting of any renders cool so that's what uh, this much does the second is about the first first option out here in this corner there is something known as material if you click on the material you see a long list coming up this is the different types of materials that is being used here in this plot okay in this scene this much amount of materials are being used and if you could select a side you have a arrow okay if you click on that you will see that something like this comes up okay this is basically the uh, place where you could see uh, you could create different types of materials also you could basically get the normal materials or the library of materials that the uh, vray provides if from here if you could go down there is something known as materials if you click material you can see a long list of materials if you could click on uh, once more on the expand folder out here you can see there is a list bricks car paints there's concrete there's emergency there's fabric there's leather there are a lot of different materials of different kinds available okay in v-ray itself which could be easily used by us fine so uh that uh, so when uh coming on to this uh v-ray now let if i'm just giving a test render okay i'm just clicking on the v-ray interactive make sure it is an interactive face and just click on it so i see that it just rendered a output for me okay it just rendered an output for me and just showcased it i'll just increase it just go to settings make it thousand okay so that it is some more big and easy to see okay fine so this is the outcome that i got for a uh, for this so if you could see that this material is not up it is not there in the v-ray okay it is not understood by V-Ray. So I will, what I will do is I am going to change this material. Okay. So for changing it, if you could see, now if you could see that there is a click once more on the interactive uh, test that uh, renders this thing because it will stop rendering at that moment. Okay. Because the red signal means that it is keeping on rendering. Okay. That is the meaning of this. So if you click on once more, it will stop the render. Just close this and then wh uh, what you need to do is you need to apply materials on this. Fine. For applying material, it's similar to applying materials for uh, the, uh, the in SketchUp. That is just go to uh, here. This is the, the material that is to be used is let it be a fabric. Okay. Just go to fabric. Okay. And I want, you can select whichever type of fabric that you want. 
I have a fabric A0120 centimeter. Okay. And then click on this material and keep. Then you will just have a asset out here. Just pull this and just drop, drag and drop it here. So you will see this coming up. And in our SketchUp, just pinning this uh, default ray. And in the material, you could see this material coming up. Okay. Just select it. With the help of paint bucket, just go inside and just paint it. Select on this and paint it. Okay. That is the method that is used. Okay. For rendering, yeah, for selecting and putting a material. Fine. You can also put a material for this. For this, I am just, for this uh, leg, I am, I want a material that is uh, a, a wooden material. Okay. So you can go to wood and lamination. Just uh, which one you want, you can basically, uh, I want a wooden plank. Okay. I'm just dragging drop it. That will finally showcase out in my material library. Just take the uh, paint bucket tool, select it. Just go inside. This is a component. So go inside and just paint it. Similarly, you can also go to uh, the second object. Just go paint it. That's it. So you can see that the leg and this gets painted. Got it. So this is how you just apply a material that the V-Ray provides because V-Ray's materials that V-Ray has provided is damn realistic. Okay. When compared to any other sort of uh, like the SketchUp materials that we have. Fine. So, uh, uh, so if you could basically put all the materials that V-Ray has provided instead of the SketchUp materials, it is really going to be looking uh, realistic. Okay. So I suggest that also, uh, uh, any doubts till now, anyone is having, I was going a little fast. That's why. Any doubts? Okay. No doubts means I'll go on. Fine. So, uh, now what is the thing is that i have already created a seed in uh, in our uh, sketchup it means that if anyone don't know what is the scene is a scene is basically a uh, a, a, a pos position or a camera placement that is kept so uh, kept and locked so that if you basically move anywhere in sketchup if you move anywhere in sketchup and just double click on it it means that you will come back to the position wherever you had it okay so that is what scene does so uh, I have kept it ready because whenever I am moving left and right so as to create or put the models in this, I will basically double click it so as to come onto the camera position that I want the render to be. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to the asset editor and just clicking on this. Fine. So what it does is that it will give me the render like this. Got it. So now if you could see that this is damn bright, this is so bright. Okay. Uh, if in the render that I was trying to show you, it was dull. That is because this is fully on sunlight. Okay. This is fully on sunlight. So what I suggest is that never try to use the sunlight that the SketchUp provides. Okay. That is the normal sunlight that is, I'm just stopping the render by clicking on it so that, uh, and then there, there is a second option out here. That is the lights after the material. There is an option called lights. If you click on light, you will see there is sunlight. Got it. This is the sunlight that is, uh, that is the sketchup, whatever the sketchup has, the sunlight that the sketchup provides that creates a shadow is basically used. Okay by V-Ray so as to create the shadow and the sunlight. Got it. If you want to change the shadow and the sunlight, you just need to change the shadow and sunlight of the SketchUp itself. Cool. So that is what it does. But I don't prefer it because if this is an interior view, right? so in the interior, normally you will not have this much sunlight. So what to be done is that you just need to turn off the sunlight. Got it. Just click on the test render and then just click on this sunlight button then you will see that the sunlight gets turned off so that is what i would suggest everyone to do fine so i'm just stopping the render so this much is for lights like lights if you start adding lights you can also add lights 
okay v-ray lights i was telling so that v-ray lights means that it is used that is out here you can see something like v-ray lights got it this v-ray lights is basically used for giving additional lights such as spotlight spherical light rectangular light there is another option that is ies lights then there is something known as dome light okay the dome light is something that is used for hdri lighting okay so that i will tell you in the further classes or tomorrow mostly tomorrow or day after tomorrow i'll basically talk about that so uh, that and this sunlight are basically like you can tell karnan and arjun you basically something like that because one should always go off if you are working so i'll tell about them later in the classes uh, when you are doing so now we'll come to now one more thing that is there is that if you go to material if you select a material uh, like uh, now i had the wooden plank if you go to the left side of it you had a right you had the uh, left side of it you have a right side as well there is arrow if you click on that you will see that there are lot many options as like this as well okay like you can basically increase and decrease the options you can increase and decrease the reflection of it refraction of it opacity of it bumps that is bumps is basically the uh, uh the uh, the grooves or the up and downs in the model okay that is what this bumps does and the binds binds are basically the colors opacity and all this i will basically tell you how to change the color of an object as well in v-ray uh, like if you have a material you want to change this veneer into a blue color or so i'll teach you tomorrow or so uh, regarding that for today this much uh, was okay for you guys to learn and you guys to practice uh, now one more thing that i would uh, teach is the rectangle light now we have a lighting wherein which you don't have any lights right? we don't have any lights everything looks like dark dark okay so i what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add some light out here for that i normally use the rectangle lights okay i'll just uh, reduce the uh, render okay okay fine hmm. cool so uh, so you have a 700 uh, by 394 surrender out here now what i am going to do if you have split screen that is the best okay you can just take this into the second screen and you can use uh, this but, but now i am using a single screen so as to showcase what i am doing okay if you could see that if i am moving this render also moves along with me okay so this is just a test render if you do it in the final render it is going to cause lot of problems that's why i am telling everyone to use the test render okay that's why second thing what i am going to do is to add some light so the rectangle light is similar to your rectangle tool that you have in sketchup you just select it wherever you need to provide the rectangle tool just click on it. okay you see that a rectangle is being provided the arrow that showcases it means that the direction of which it is being providing the light okay so that is the meaning of that you can select this and rotate it with the same it is basically and you can think that it is an element of your sketchup and work okay don't need to think that a v-ray is separate it is something like a incorporated one inside now so you can basically rotate it and paste this lighting inside okay i'm just keep rotating it uh, and just pressing it okay so now you could see that in the render that the light is being provided by the rectangle tool and make one more thing sure that this area or the the, the area that is a rectangle that you have made does not comes into your render because once it comes into your render it would basically not look good it will be basically an illuminated surface got it that is what is the meaning and now i'll just provide one more on the top okay just making copying it by just moving it control then just move up the similar manner you copy any element in sketchup just use that and copy it okay copy this and then place it on on top just move it a little and then what i'm doing is i'm just double clicking on my uh, scenes so you come to a position where in which 
you basically have uh, okay so i have uh, the 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 rectangle of this coming up onto my render so i'll just move it a little back cool Cool. So now we have some sort of natural type of lighting like you have a window at that side and the small type of lighting has basically come up. Got it. So that's what it is does. Okay. Well, that is what this rectangle does. Now you can see that in the lights. If you click lights, you can see that rectangle light comes up. Okay. You can change the intensity. If you click on this arrow, what happens is you will see something like this out here. Okay, so here you can change the intensity. I copied it. If you place one more rectangle, means that uh, these two rectangles, na? like out here, we have like two rectangles. I now just copied it. If you select once more and do, there will be something not rectangle light two. Okay, so now I'm just I just copied it. That's why only the single rectangle is there. Okay, or else I'll just make it, or else you will not understand. I'm just deleting it. I am just making a separate one out here. Now you could see that there is a one more lighting coming up. Look, rectangle light for hashtag one has come. That means this is the second lighting. Got it? So you could what you could do is that you could. Uh, rotate this and also you could place wherever you want you can scale it you can basically treat it like the same element of sketchup got it like any component or a group in sketchup got it like the similar manner you can use it i'm just scaling it down so as to uh, get in the same thing okay so you got such a okay cool so I have basically made a rectangle light out here. Okay. And just uh, going to the my normal position and then giving a render. So you could see the render coming up. Got it. So now I have like two lights. If you double click on this, you can basically rename it. I can, I'm just going to rename it as top light. Top rectangle REC. Okay. And this I am just reading, double clicking it and writing it as side light. You just need to write it because or else this is gonna get confused. Okay, just do that. And then you can, from here, you can reduce and increase the intensity or from here in this. If you increase the intensity, you can see that your render becomes more color, like more light comes in that area. Okay, the side light is increasing. Got it? And also you can go to the top light. F, okay, top light and increase the intensity as a, how you like. Okay, just so that you get a really good image effect. Got it from here. So that is what it does. And then we have the color and texture. If you click the color and texture, you can change the color of it. For example, you can change to red and you can see it changes to red. Got a red in color. It changes to yellow and again it changes to yellow. So you, with whatever light is you are got, you need to be provided let it be according to it is going to be an evening lighting that you require okay the so side light is going to be an evening light then you can basically from here or from here color and texture let's click on it just change the color to a orange shade and you can just uh, select it and then you can see so you can reduce the intensity as well so as to play with it and uh, create some sort of effects okay you can basically create effects and so in your render okay once you finish this much is for today that i am gonna teach teaching this much is enough for you till uh, to get to understand about this lightings and stuff and uh, baki i will teach it tomorrow but before leaving i'll just show you how to make the final render of this that is you can stop this render go to settings now change this 
change this button to progressive. You can see the progressive occurs. Okay. Now it is in medium. You can keep it at high or plus high, the maximum plus plus high. Okay. So that you get the best quality render. And you can change this to 2K or 4K. Okay. And if I am, I am basically TPK as 1K because it, I need it to be a little faster. And you just need to press on this. Okay. And it starts rendering. Just click on the side button that is show the V-Ray message window. Just click on this as well. Then it showcases how much the render is been finishing. Okay. It will take time. It will take a little time to render the image uh, according to your graphics card and GPU. Uh, so uh, be patient. Now it is just 1K that I've pressed. If you are going for 2K and better renders, it will be of more. Now it is finished. Okay. 100 it has finished. And then just go to save current channel. You can click on it. Then you can change this. You can basically import it as a JPEG or a PNG and you can save it. What uh, let it be a, uh, in, a interior view. Okay. Interior view. And then you can just save it. Press save. So you are the, the, the image that you want. The final image that you wanted is being set. So this is the just the starting of V-Ray. So with starting, you are able to create such a interesting stuff. Got it. So uh, this much, if you guys understood, uh, I hope everyone understood to this much. I was a little past today. I guess any doubts are there. Just let me know now. It is uh, damn realistic than uh, your uh, Lumion. Okay. According to me. A Lumion or any other render engines, this is really realistic in nature. The lightings are really good, okay, because of which it is a little more realistic than any other uh, render engines that I've used. Cool. Uh, 